Amplify Science, Plate Motion Unit, Chapter 3, Lesson 3.1, Considering Rates of Plate Movement. You begin in the warm-up, examining an image with a caption and answering three questions below. Once you've had time to do that, your teacher will play for you a video about GPS or Global Positioning System to make you familiar with that technology. Using that information, we move you over to plate movement. Um, so here's a map in which you are given the direction of plate movement, looking at the arrows. Notice convergent or divergent arrowheads. And numbers. And the numbers, if you look below in the caption under the map, you see they're reported in centimeters per year. So this gives us an idea of not only direction, but how quickly or slowly, in this case, plates are actually moving. Uh, you're introduced to the idea of rate. This is something that uh, you've been introduced to multiple times in math class, but how often or fast something happens, which, if you remember from math, is going to involve two uh, units, uh, in this case centimeters or distance, and time in seconds, or in this case millions of years, actually. Uh, and then from that, you'll be able to calculate rate uh, by dividing, just like you do in math. So in this step, there are three screens you need to move through. Um, in the third screen, after you know about GPS and you see a map and you understand rates, you're over to the plate simulation. And so I open the simulation and it says go to region two. And region two really doesn't have much on it. Uh, and they do that on purpose so you can just look at movement. You're going to be dropping in two markers. It says put them as close as you can together. So I'm going to Grab two markers here and place them close together near the boundary as I can. That's pretty good. And it says set the boundary type to divergent, so they're moving away from each other. And run the simulation. And as the simulation runs, they want you to pause it every 50 million years. So I'm going to let it run as close as I can to 50, pause it. Uh, and then I'm going to click on the marker. And the marker is going to give me two pieces of information. It's The top is going to tell me how far it traveled from where it was. And then and underneath, it's going to indicate the distance between the two markers. So from marker 1 to marker 2, marker 2 is 1,235 kilometers away. Marker 1 has moved 580 kilometers. Your job is to then record that in the table back in the lesson, which is on the third screen. So I pop back here. Time, millions of years. In this case, it would be 50 million. Actually, on my map, it's 51. Uh, the distance, 580 kilometers. And then I'm going to do some division to determine how many kilometers per million years that travels. And I'm going to do that for four samples in my model. Uh, once you've done that, make sure you hand that in. Then you're going to move over to step three, in which your teacher will decide uh, whether you're going to do this alone or in groups. Uh, and then when you're in the group that you'll work with or by yourself, you're going to be given a word bank, uh, whether it's the words just on the screen or whether you receive the physical cards from the lesson. You're trying to arrange and build sentences out of these terms. And the final activity uh, is listed as homework, uh, but for us it's always the final step in the lesson. You are choosing between one of two claims. And using the word bank, you are explaining which of these two claims you support. I'm going to go back and open up the projections so we can kind of review what big ideas you sh we should have come to. So, um, again, claim one, that the South American and African plate move apart suddenly, or do they move apart gradually? You need to start developing ideas about that at this point. Uh, keeping in mind, we now have GPS data for plate movement not only can tell by landforms and features which way plates are moving, now we actually get measurements with global positioning system. And then finally, this key concept that Earth plates travel at a rate too slow to be experienced by humans. Again, go back to the claims. This really points you in the direction of which claim you need to be supporting at this point. And as part four in the homework, you need to support it in that, um, in that text box below. Okay, choosing which claim and explaining it uh, with what you've done so far. And that is lesson 3.1.